Hey everybody, welcome back to the PSDA podcast. I am so excited about this next guest because I was him before he was who he is. Round of applause, everybody. Come on, I can hear you clapping out there in the podcast universe. Well, this is Patrick Kelly. Well, I'm not Patrick Kelly, but I am here with Patrick Kelly, our Director of Governmental Affairs. I told him before we got on, before I even hit record, that I was going to make a joke, and I think I'm pretty funny already. What you say, Patrick? Oh, absolutely. I, that's the one part of the job I have not been able to get remotely close to reaching your level of brilliance at. Well, I, I appreciate that, Patrick. I am really excited about having Patrick on as we start the 2023 legislative session. Um, I'm sure there's a lot to get to, and so I'm just going to start off by letting the people know who they're hearing from. Patrick, just give us a little bit about yourself. I'm sure all of our members know about you, but someone in Alaska may pick this podcast up. You just never know. You never know. I, it's cold up there, so maybe they want to listen. Um, I, I've been teaching in South Carolina for the last 18 years. Um, I teach AP U.S. government at Blythewood High School. Um, continue to be able to do that each morning. Um, but then I'm the rest of the day director of governmental affairs for Palmetto State Teachers Association, uh, which means I get the awesome opportunity to represent the views and voices of South Carolina's professional educators um, to the individuals making choices and decisions at the state house and in the governor's office and, and in policy decisions across our state. So we are not the knower of everything legislative at home. Tell us about family. All that good stuff. Yeah, no, I, I am married um, to someone far smarter than me. Uh, my wife, Heather, is an adjunct professor at the University of South Carolina in the business school. Um, we live out in the Northeast Richland County area um, where our two daughters uh, attend Richland Two Schools. Um, our, we've got a ninth grader and a sixth grader. Um, so I am thoroughly outnumbered in the house. Um, the only redeeming thing going for me in the balance of power is um, our pandemic puppy, um, who is a, a male schnoodle. So he and I, we, we try to keep it um, as close to the brotherhood as possible within the household. I just realized this, Patrick. We are, our homes are spitting images of each other. I married someone much smarter than I am. All girls in my household. We have a pandemic dog. That's a boy. Here's why we're here. We just spent three minutes getting to know each other a little more, even though we work in the same office. But let's just jump into the legislative session. What can teachers expect in this session? Um, what are some of the high hanging fruit that, you know, we want or low hanging fruit that we want teachers to uh, be aware of? Well, I think one thing that teachers need to be aware of is this is the start of a two year session. So what that means is everything they may have heard in the news last year anything that was unfinished business has to start all over. So last year, there was a lot of conversation around um, education scholarship accounts, around instruction and um, curriculum issues. But all those bills, if they didn't get signed into law by Governor McMaster last May and June, they are dead and they got to start over the entire legislative process. So um, this legislative session, um, it, South Carolina's General Assembly runs on a two-year term. Um, so this year's session, I think, will be a tale of two different stories. The first story will be unfinished business from 2022. And then hopefully we get to um, the new issues and the new priorities for 2023. Well, thank you, Patrick, for sharing that. So here's something I really want to address, and we've talked about it before. Talk about the importance of getting your information as it relates to education from professional associations, i.e. PSDA, obviously. Um, and not to really depend on other sources. Like, t talk about the importance of that. Yeah, I think the reason that's important is because in our in our social media culture, we are so saturated with information, um, and and the policy process is complex. It can be really confusing, and there's a lot of nuance to it, and there's a lot of detail to it. And so, if your source of information isn't able to fully engage in the legislative process to track all the ins and outs of every bill and every committee hearing. Um, to talk to the legislators on a daily basis that are, are, are really shaping legislation, then you might miss a key piece of nuance or detail. And in doing so, that can fundamentally shift your understanding of what's going on. Um, so something as simple as um, when, when a bill comes to the floor of the House or the Senate, um, oftentimes a, an amendment or a proposal, um, there'll be a motion to table it, which means to put it to the side, which is effectively to kill it. Um, and so if you vote to table something, that means you're opposed to it. Um, well, if you just look at a vote tally, you might actually get it in reverse and think that people support something that they don't and vice versa. 
Um, so at PSTA, we try to make sure that we're providing that information in a concise and clear way to members um, so that you've got the info that you need um, while filtering out all the other stuff that just um, either A, you have to be a government teaching dork like me to enjoy, <laughs> um, or it's your full-time profession as a journalist or something to keep track of. So let's stay right there for a second. Let's say I'm a teacher out here listening to this and I hear Patrick and I, I hear all the great things he's saying and I'm sitting there like, I don't have time to do this. You know, um, yes, I'm a member of PSCA, but, you know, I see the emails come in, but I don't open them. Like, I don't have time to read this email and talk about the ease of which, you know, the association, but you specifically has made it them made it easy for them to advocate on behalf of their profession. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a key goal for us because we know the most valuable and scarce resource that educators have is time, um, both in the classroom and just for work-life balance. And so we try to be very mindful of that and respectful of that. Um, it's something as somebody who's teaching every day myself that I, I get it. I've got two email accounts. I got the Palmetto um, State Teachers one, but I also got the um, teaching account with student emails coming in. So I'm trying not to overload an email account um, so we try to send out a, a consolidated Friday email with legislative updates, um, probably a little wordier than it should be, but that's just me. I, I, I'm, I'm working on conciseness. My family will vouch for that. I, I, hopefully I'm improving. Um, but we also try to provide tools for members um, that it, it's respectful of their time, um, such as an advocacy platform that we use that allows members to um, send an email um, that's already been pre-scripted, but they can edit it. Um, that already has um, delivery set. So all you have to do is put in your information and the email will go to whoever the appropriate parties are on the given issue, whether that's your personal representatives, whether that's the members of a committee, whether that's the governor's office. Um, so we try to take some of the logistics of um, advocacy and communication off the plates of members so that they can focus on what's important, which is elevating their voice because that's the most important thing that PSTA believes is needed in policy creation and education is to be informed by the voice of our state's professional educators. Absolutely. So as it relates to this session specifically, what are some of the things that PSTA has been fighting for? And, and in addition to that, what are some of the things that we've been fighting for that those in positions of, in the position to make those things happen have also supported? Well, I think that, again, the in terms of what we are supporting, we've put out our legislative agenda. It's the REACH agenda for 2023. Um, and in that, we are focused on the issues that we have heard most clearly from members that we need, um, in particular around recruitment and retention. The teacher shortage in South Carolina is, is continuing to grow. Um, the latest teacher supply and demand report shows over 1,400 t vacant teaching positions at the start of the year, which is a record over last year, which was a record over the year before, and we can keep doing that game back several years. Um, so I think that the um, the scope of the teacher shortage as well as the impact that's having on students is resonating with members of the General Assembly. Um, and so you're seeing some positive actions. There's some bills that have been introduced to improve teacher working conditions, um, bills introduced to enhance teacher recruitment efforts, like providing an enhanced lottery scholarship um, amount to students in colleges that are studying to be um, teachers. Um, you're seeing it in the budget. The governor put out his budget proposal last Friday, and he's proposing nearly one-third of projected state revenue growth to go toward teacher salaries, to increase the teacher salary schedule to a minimum of 42500 with a goal of having that to at least 50000 by the year 2026, which is exactly on the five-year timeline that PSTA established in 2022 is our advocacy, advocacy goal um, for getting minimum pay in this state to 50000 Our listeners out there, um, it sometimes seems like a never-ending cycle, right? And um, we want you to know PSCA is fighting for you and fighting for the advancement of public education in the state. Um, and so our advocacy efforts are being heard um, in our legislative agenda, uh, which you can find on our website, palmettoteachers.org, so you can see exactly some of the priorities that we have um, as it relates to this General Assembly um, and this session, as Patrick mentioned, early two years. So um, as we wrap up this time, because I know Patrick – Patrick can talk for 24 hours straight about this stuff. I mean, he lives this stuff. And um, 
we're so thankful to have him with the association. But is there anything else that you want to share about this legislative session uh, that teachers should have on their radar? Um, and, and before he answers that question, you know, we will have Patrick as a regular guest on this PSA podcast. Um, he is a crowd favorite. Anything you want to share to the good people out there, um, the educators out there and supporters of public education about this legislative session before we close? Well, I think what's critically important for people to remember is that the legislature is responsive to the voices that they hear, Um, but they're also responsive in a roundabout way to the voices that they don't hear. Um, And so while teaching and and being a professional educator is one of the most demanding professions out there, it takes so much of your time. The reality is that educators have to get involved in advocacy efforts. And advocacy doesn't have to be big and flashy and fancy or time-consuming. It can be as simple as a phone call or an email or a letter. But sharing your voice and your expertise and your story is at the core of what advocacy is to educate policymakers. And if the professional educators of this state aren't sharing their perspective and their voice and their experiences and identifying the needs they see in their schools – then the legislature is hearing from other voices. And, and not that those voices are necessarily invalid or, or, or not valuable because they are constituents as well. They should be heard. But for a legislator to get a complete picture of what is needed to improve our schools and our communities and our state, they need to hear from everyone. And at the end of the day, if they're looking at education policy, there's a lot of important voices from students and families, but it is critically important that they hear from the foremost experts on what works in a classroom, which is the professional educators of this state. Um, So as as we go through this session and we, we get opportunities to talk about different policies from education scholarship accounts to instruction to school safety and student mental health, on each of those topics, we our elected officials are best served and can best represent us if they have the opportunity to hear the voices of professional educators. And that's what PSTA is going to be working to do for the course of the next 18 weeks that the General Assembly is in session. Thank you, kind sir, um, for just sharing uh, your anticipation for this session, the the hope that we have and um, all the priorities that we have listed in our legislative agenda. Thank you for taking the time. Um, to tune in and to talk to me during the PSDA podcast. I'm Craig King, host of your PSDA podcast, and we'll talk to you soon. 